Thank you to the, the Sunday school, the teachers, and the kids for reminding us about the, the story about love. Amen? So, uh, I hope you feel blessed this morning. Are you blessed? Put up your hand if you feel blessed. Yes, it's wonderful to serve the Lord. And uh, my topic is also on love. And I just want to remind ourselves, all of us, about the ingredients of love. Amen. We're in the month of love. But for children of the Lord, every day is a, is a day of love. Isn't that so? Yeah, we don't have to wait for Valentine's Day to show love to our loved ones. Amen? So, the message that I have this morning is about the important and well-known scripture in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I had a chocolate here, I would have given it to you. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 13, and we will look at the ingredients, what the Bible say about love, what love is, what love is not, and so forth. And we know that Paul was writing to the Corinthians, and the Corinthians, they were very impatient. They were discontented. They were envious. You know, all these things that we say that love is not. They had all these things. And in, also in the time that we are living in, we find that people are also displaying these negative characteristics in their lives, in their homes, at work, wherever they are. And we need to remind ourselves about this topic again. And we know that our relationship in the family, in society, need to be marked by love. Isn't that so? The world is full of hatred. You can see it everywhere. On the news, where you stay maybe in that environment, at the office, you know people are just biting at each other. And that is not what we should do. The Bible reminds us also, the husbands, they are to love their wives. And so also, the wives must love their husbands. Parents must love their children and vice versa. Children must love their parents. Brothers must love their sisters and so forth. And we all must love one another as the word of God tells us. We need, shouldn't display um, or think about ourselves. We need to have selfless love. And this is the priority for our, we as children of the Lord, that these verses are so profound and is written under the subject of love. So we're not going to read the whole chapter of chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, but I just want to remind you that the first three verses of chapter 13, it shows the preeminence of love, that love is greater than the spiritual gifts that the Corinthians displayed. You know, they were very gifted in their spiritual gift, but they lacked love. And if you lack love, you can do whatever you want to do. It just means nothing. Because everything you do, if there's not love in it, then it means nothing. Verses 4 to 7 of that chapter shows us the practice of love. Our love is greater than all the spiritual gifts, as I mentioned because of its selfless characteristics. Verses 8 to 13, it shows the 
per- permanence of love, that love is greater than all spiritual gifts because it outlasts them. But I just want to focus on verses 4 to 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And these verses for me is the ingredients. You know, when you bake, you must have all the ingredients to make it something nice, isn't it? You can't put, maybe, with if you want to bake a cake, you can't take, uh, maybe put oats in and put sweets in. You know, it's going to be a funny cake. You need to have the right ingredients for this cake. And we know that um, Paul is talking here, he's given us the list of ingredients here in this few verses that I mentioned. And we see here the love of Christ for us, that agape love that we always talk about. That's the love that Christ has for us. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4. And I will just break down all these verses individually. The first one is, it talks about love suffers long. And Pastor Yip always teaches us about the Greek word for love suffers long is the makrothumia. I'm sure you've heard of that. And um, that is the meaning of that love suffers long. And patience is an interesting quality if we mention about this, in that we and I, we don't need it, we want it. Isn't that so? We want this macrothumia that we're talking about. If you, if you are a pa- person of patience, and our patience are tested every day, amen? A few of us know that. We are tested every day. Now, if you are a person of patience, um, you will be slow to anger. You will not get cross very quickly. You will endure personal wrongs without retaliation. Isn't that so? In today's time that we are living, you know, people don't have time for each other. If you say something, I must say, account, I must counter you. And that is not what love is. We need to have endurance in terms of the love that the Word of God. The second one is, love is kind. Now, this kind, kindness, it talks about also friendliness. Love is friendly. Do you know a friendly person? Some of us know friendly people, you know, that are really friendly and not... Now, what is kindness? Kindness is patience in action. Kindness is patience in action. It refers to how we treat other people. That's the action. You know, somebody can say, you're a kind person, but how do you treat other people? Do you show that love? Do you show that kindness to other people? That is the test. Yeah. Um, And we see uh, that this person is tender and forgiving when the person is wrong. That's That's the kind of person that you find. Um, where you say, don't worry, I know you made a mistake, I forgive you. That is kindness in action. And um, it's a kind of person that has the ability to soothe hurt feelings. You know? To calm an upset person. Do you know a person like that? If you know you're upset, you can speak to that person. They will calm you down. They will tell you, don't worry, you know, it's not the end of the world. You're still the same person, don't worry about that. And this kind of person will help you, give you practical ways how to deal with things. The third one is love does not envy. Love is not jealous. And don't we see jealousy 
every day. You know, this girl don't like the guy anymore. There's jealousy there. With the husband and the wife, you know, the wife is give, uh, giving attention to too many people. And the husband feels jealous about that. Where's my attention that I need to get? Um, you know, and we see that all these things contribute to the, the relationship there is. The trust is gone when there's jealousy also. You know, the husband don't trust the wife, the wife don't trust the husband, and vice versa. Even boyfriend, girlfriend, they don't trust each other. James 4 say, James says that jealousy is often the source of quarrels and conflict. Isn't that true? It's always when there's jealousy in a racial relationship, there's always quarrel. There's always conflict. And that is not what love is. The fourth point is, love does not parade itself. You know? Love does not brag about itself. And we see uh, the fourth and the fifth point, they go together. Love is not puffed up. Love is not proud. You know? And these two ugly twins that I mentioned here, you know, um, they stem from s selfishness and they are the flip side of jealousy. Selfishness. We know what selfishness is all about. Jealousy is wanting what someone else has. I want that. You know, you can't have it. I want it. And bragging is trying to make others jealous of what you have. And these things, that's, that can't be love. If you go and brag about something, you know, I've got this new car and you don't have anything. Or I have this great job. Bless the Lord that gave you that job. But if you make it something else of it, out of it, it's not, it's not love. Um, in Matthew 6 verse 1 to 2 says, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. You know? Go around and I'm this guy, I'm this lady. You know, you boast about things. Remember that the Lord blessed you with things also. And we cannot boast about those things in public and say, I'm the man, I'm the lady, you know. I've got it and I can show it. The second verse 2 says, So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. You know, sometimes we give to people and we, everybody must know about it that we have the resources, we can give as we wish. Don't do that, says the word of God. As the hypocrites did in the synagogue and on the streets to be honored by men, I tell you the truth, they have received their full uh, reward, their reward in full. The other point is, the sixth point, love does not behave Rudely. Ra love is not rude. Love does not needlessly offend people. Isn't that so? Love hath, has good manners. That is what love is. It is courteous. It is polite. It is sensitive to the feelings of others. And always it uses tact. We know what tact means, how you say something. You can say s something nice in a rude way. Isn't that so? But you must say something nice in a nice way. In, in government, they're talking about diplomacy. You know how we deal with other countries also. Do it in a nice way. Um, so... Seventh point here is love does not seek its own. 
Love is not self-seeking, you know. It's about me. It's self-centeredness. It shouldn't be like that. Love must seek for the good of others. That is what love is seeking. As we read Matthew 6, we do things, we do good things to please the Lord, not to please ourselves. Yes, you can feel good about it, but that's, you keep it for yourself. But we do things to please the Lord. Love is not provoked. Provoked, we can also say touchy. You know, touchy people, um, they sometimes, I think this is a problem for many people. When you get saved, God's love in our hearts, you know, we must stop wearing um, our feelings on our shoulders. When God saves you, there's a transformation taking place in your life. And that love that we display is not touchy. You know, and there's many people that make everyone around them walking on eggshells. Do you know a person like that? You can't say anything, you can't do anything, and that person is on your case. Whether you do good or bad, that person is always on your case. And we know that about their temper, you know. They, they have a bad temper to intimidate and to punish people, you know. And when you confront them about it, they will show, sure, sure, you know, my temper is bad. But that was just for a few minutes. And kaboom, the bomb, the bomb burst. And we know the damage that a person like that can cause to people. You know, if you have a bad, bad temper, you intimidate people and you punish them. That can't be love. And look at the devastation that they can cause in their family, in their community, even at work. They can cause a lot of damage. It says here, love, think, no evil. Love doesn't keep tally of what you've been doing wrong. There was a story that was told by a married guy. And uh, every time when him and his wife is in conflict, he says that she will get historical and the friends say historical what do you mean she gets historical doesn't she get hysterical he said no she get historical because she will go from the time they met she will remind him of all the things that he has done wrong she will rehearse those things and remind him let me remind you that love does not keep score of things. We need to forgive as we go on in life. Isn't that so? That's not love that keeps score. We need to give forgive. Love will not allow you to keep hidden agendas. Isn't that so? Sometimes we keep hidden agendas um, of revenge, of retribution. It says in Romans 12, verse 9, it says, The Lord said, Jesus said, Vengeance is mine. We shouldn't take revenge on people. Those belong to the Lord. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love will never allow you to rejoice in someone else's downfall. Amen? We cannot rejoice in somebody who made a mistake because it can happen to you as well and you're not going to like it. When people rejoice, look at her, look at him. He thinks he's this person. Look what happened now. 
Love is never glad when others goes wrong, go wrong. He's not glad about that. And there's a, fel- a fine balance between love um, or to love. Love is kind and overlooks the faults of others. But we must remember it does not compromise on the truth and it does not take a soft stance against sin. If you know somebody's sin, you know, don't close your eyes for it. Don't overlook it. Sin stays sin. And we need to address those things if there is sin. Um, Love rejoices in the truth. Why do you think love rejoices in the truth? Why should we, should love rejoice in truth? It's because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Jesus is interested in the truth. And so should we also be interested in what is the truth. Love gets excited when it hears about spiritual victories. Isn't that wonderful? Love encourages by expressing joy in, in things. The uh, Apostle John, is, he wrote in 3 John 4, it says that I have no greater joy than this to hear of my children walking in the truth. We need to walk in the truth. Husband and wife, parents with children, walk in the truth. We cannot uh, oversee things. You know, we cannot close our eyes if somebody is not walking in the truth. That can't be love that you show to that person. It says that love bears all things. The word can mean to protect by covering. So bears, love bears all things means it covers things. Love doesn't broadcast the problem of others. Keep it for yourself. Don't broadcast it. Love doesn't run down others with, uh, with jokes, sarcasm, or to put someone down. You know, if someone is down, don't kick them further down. That's not what love does. Love defends the character of other persons. But this is also within the limits. You cannot protect something that is wrong. That can't be love. Love won't lie about weaknesses, but uh, neither will it deliberate expose and emphasize them. Love protects, it covers. Another point is love believes all things. What is this telling you? Love believe all things. Why does love believe all things? Because love always trusts. And we know that there are a certain level of trust when you love someone. Isn't it so? When you meet a person, you trust each other. And you should always have that trust. But when trust is break, it can cause major challenges to the marriage. If you break the trust, it can kill a relationship. Isn't that so? We've been disappointed by many people before, and we know who you can trust and who you cannot trust because of that. And studies have shown that if trust is broken in a marriage, it will take up to seven years to rebuild it. That is a long time. And I mean that is hard work to build a marriage because of mistrust. And that is always that I want to encourage everyone to do things that will benefit your spouse or your partner. Don't do things that will affect them negatively. It says here again, love hopes all things. You know, there's an expectation 
that we're talking about the hope here. He does not expect the one love <coughs> to fail. You know, he doesn't expect you love someone. You don't expect that person to fail because you love that person. There's an expectation, there's a hope for success for your partner, for your husband, for your wife. There's an expectation for them to succeed and not to fail. Love refuses to take failure as final. If someone fail, it's not the end. We all fail. How small or how big it is, we all fail. And we must allow ourselves to, to love each other again. You know, it's not the end of the world. It does not ignore the reality. That is also very important. The reality that we are living in. It doesn't close our eyes for problems. We must keep the reality in mind that we're living in a, a time where we need to build each other. We need to lift each other. We need to encourage one another. We are children of the Lord. We cannot put this other down. That is what the world do. They are those who don't serve the Lord. They do these things. They push this, themselves down, others down. And we need to encourage. It says here, love endures all things. This is the word that we have here, upomane. It endures. You know, it, it comes from a military background also. It says that it sustains the assault of the enemy. If you're fighting in a war, it sustains the assault of the enemy. If the enemy attacks you, you must stay your ground. And that is what this word means. It endures, it stays, it's, it, it doesn't move backwards. We need to sustain ourselves. And we know that um, we're living in tough times, tough times on the relationships, on the marriages. I know it's tough out there, but we hold on to the Lord. We trust him because he is the one who can carry us through. Love endures all things. That is what we need to, to remind ourselves. The last point that I want to share is love never fails. That is the love of God for us, the, the agape love. It never fails. We are human beings. We fail sometimes. But the love of God for us never fails. God loves us unconditionally. And we need to have that attitude towards our loved ones. Let us love one another because Christ loved us. A new commandment, it says in John 13, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this will all know that you are my disciples because you show love for one another. Isn't that wonderful that we show love? We set the example for others. People want to know why are you different? It's because I have the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Isn't that a wonderful testimony that we say? One John four, as the kids was mentioning it, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's a reminder. And we, if we want to love one another, we must focus on the love of God for us. That is where we learn from. Um, 
let's God let God's unconditional love spread throughout your attitude your motives your thoughts your words and your action let us display those things in us in order for us to draw people also to the Lord it's important that we love one another as Christ has loved us may you this week when you celebrate those who celebrate Valentine's Day may you be reminded about these things what love is and what love is not um, we know that God is love and if we hold on to him if we focus on the Lord that love will grow stronger in us and we are able to share that love with our loved ones shouldn't it be a, a lovely place to to stay in if we all love one another if we're not so focused on our mistakes sometimes we have 99 percent of the things we try and do right but there's that one percent that sometimes take up the space in our minds we must focus on that one percent you're not going to get someone hundred percent we all make our mistakes so we need to focus on those wonderful things yes we work on those things that we need to work on but we must focus on the things that that person is the good things that that person is displaying and encourage one another to do better to do good to one another amen let us all stand father god we thank you for your love towards us thank you father that we can talk about what love is the love that you have for us as your children i pray that you will we will draw from that love that we will learn from that love that you have for us in order for us to draw, to to grow stronger in the love that you have for us and that we can share that love to others our loved ones even those who don't know you lord that they will see the love of christ in our lives every day we pray that you will just bless us father god we pray for those marriages especially that's taking a lot of strain at this very moment i pray father god that you will speak to each and every one the husband the wife father that they will trust you more that they will grow that love of you in their hearts and that they are able to forgive one another father god i pray that you will bless us this week give us a, us a wonderful time and father thank you for everything that you provide for us every day lord we thank you we cannot say enough thank you for what you mean in our lives bless us this week and we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor congregation receive the blessing of the lord may the grace mercy peace and love from god the father god the son and god the holy spirit be with you all until jesus comes again and all god's people say amen have a wonderful week and enjoy your time this week i also just want to say that for the next two sundays we will not be here we're going to cape town to celebrate my mom's 90th birthday so we will see you after that in march have a blessed week amen